Hello, my name is Des Lally and you're welcome to the 44th Clifton Arts Festival. Some years ago, we established the Clifton Arts Festival Bursary, which went towards young artists, writers and practitioners in the arts from the local area or had associations with Clifton Community School or other schools in the area. Uh, the first recipient of this award was the musician Seamus O'Flaherty. The second was the artist Lisa O'Donnell and the third was the filmmaker Tristan Hania. Uh, we now have a, an interview with these three recipients and some students from Clifton Community School where the three recipients of the Clifton Arts Festival bursary speak about their life and their journey in the arts and in many ways inspire a younger generation to look towards the arts where they can celebrate their own creativity Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Clifton Arts Festival. Uh, we're honoured to be joined by the students and staff uh, of Clifton Community School, uh, the artistic home uh, of Clifton Arts uh, Festival, founded there in 1977. Um, we're also joined by three special guests. Uh, and these three special guests are all recipients of the Clifton Arts Festival Bursary Award. Um, this was an, an, an initiative set up uh, four years ago by Clifton Arts Festival to encourage and to recognise and to support artists of all disciplines who are embarking on a career in the arts. And with these three artists that are joining us today, Tristan Hania, Lisa O'Donnell, and Seamus O'Flaherty. Uh, you couldn't pick a, a more diverse grouping of artists from differing disciplines. And uh, Tristan Hania uh, is a filmmaker uh, of great distinction. Lisa O'Donnell uh, is a visual artist, also of great distinction. And Seamus O'Flaherty is only one person, but he's a musician, a dancer, and a singer. And he's a performer of, of distinction as well. So I'm going to ask each, uh, each Tristan, Lisa and Seamus, maybe uh, to speak a little bit about growing up in Connemara and uh, how maybe Connemara, uh, Clifton, the schools in the area, maybe the Arts Festival or other local uh, artistic groups influenced their choice of careers and in, 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 in many cases encouraged them. So... Tristan, you're sitting in, 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 in a lovely automobile there. Uh, can you talk to us um, about your feelings uh, of growing up and starting your, your life in the arts uh, in, in Clifton uh, and uh, Connemara? Yeah, well, uh, I, loved, I loved growing up in Connemara. I loved, I loved school as well. I loved Clifton School. I loved going to it, but I wasn't very good at school um, when, while I was there. Um, I didn't... Uh, that was no fault of, of anyone but mine, but I always felt it. Academically, I struggled, I guess. Uh, yeah, a bit. I, I struggled. I struggled a bit in, in school. I wasn't what you'd call, you know, you know I wasn't. Uh, my God, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, and you just I felt like I was looking for something that's, that I didn't find until until later when I when I left school. Um, and then I kind of, I came to arts late. But the one thing that, that in school during the arts, it was the first place I was introduced to, to the arts, where I saw it in front of me, where I, I, I took part in a couple of school plays. Um, I did, I was in some, uh, we put on Greece, I think one year, and we did a couple of other little plays. And that was the first time I kind of engaged in arts and was exposed to arts every arts week. I remember we used to get classes off and we'd be brought down to GPA. Our performers would come into our classrooms or we'd go over to the gym and there'd be concerts on, performances, plays. And that was my, I, I had never been, I'd never been to a theater or anything like that. Or I didn't go to a cinema till I was nearly 17. So school was where I, where I was exposed to arts for the first time. Um, and there was something it was something I always remembered, but I always kind of felt it was a little bit unattainable. You know, it wasn't something that I had seen 
many people do or that I knew somebody who'd gone on to do it. So it kind of was something that just went to the back of my head after I left school. And I went into various jobs in my 20s from factories to construction for about six years and then door to door salesman. And I didn't come back to arts, the arts until I was at, till I turned, till I was 30 years of age. Um, I got introduced to a guy who was involved in an amateur theater company. And I had always talked about wanting to be an actor, uh, but I'd never followed through on it. And this guy was an actor and he was a friend of my ex-girlfriends. And she, she introduced me and she was like, oh, Tristan, Tristan wanted to be an actor. And I was like, mortified. I was like, you shut up, I don't wanna, you know, I was embarrassed almost by the thought of it. And I got talking to this guy and we exchanged numbers. And a couple of weeks later, I got a phone call off him saying they were putting on the Martin McDonough play, The Lonesome West. And the guy who was playing the alcoholic priest from Connemara had pulled out and would I like to come and audition for the role? So I went and auditioned for that play and we did, got the role and rehearsed and did a week run. And that was in February, 2010. So that was my first way into into the in, into that was that, that's that was what opened the door for me and as soon as I did that play it was just like a, a light bulb coming on because I was a little lost I was 30 and I was working as a door-to-door salesman uh, and yeah this was like it blew my mind at 30 doing that play standing on a stage in front of people it just opened up I kind of, you know, I had a purpose, you know, I kind of felt like I had a purpose or I had something, a passion that, that I could follow. And then I just started picking up little bits of work here and there, acting jobs. And then in 2012, I started writing a couple of scripts and I made my first film in 2014. And that premiered at the Galway Film Fla. Uh, shot that out in Renville, out in Kylemore. Um, all locally kind of funded friends and family and, and, and then made another film the year after. And it just kind of snowballed from there, kind of out, an, out of an accident of meeting some guy who did a play. It just happened like that. And it, and it, and it totally changed the direction of my life. Um, but I, I do feel the seed was sown in, in, in my time in Clifton. And someone like Brendan, who, who just always spoke so passionately about the arts, you could see in Arts Week when he would be introducing, introducing acts and bringing them into classrooms to us. And his enthusiasm for it was infectious at the time. And, and you know, that has an impression on at someone at that age. You know, it's a, you're at a real impressionable age, I think, when you're 14, 15. Um, and that's, I think, where the seed was sown because I'd never been exposed to the arts before uh, and yeah since then it's just been kind of making independent films and gathering a bit of traction with them and I'm still acting then in 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 things along alongside that um, so it's it's just kind of gone from one thing to the next and I'm just trying to uh, keep it going you know before I get found out <laughs> Yeah, well, Tristan, what you say there, um, you know, you speak with great passion about your, your formative years, but also that <clears throat> even if you're not uh, interested uh, uh, or show a, a passion for the arts early on, there's still some of it seeping through into you uh, and yeah. it can develop later on in life uh, as you go on. But you also say there about the importance of the school environment uh, and teachers with passion who inspire, inspired you and inspire us all. Maybe I'll move on to Lisa, move over to the visual arts, uh, if that's okay. And we can come back again to Tristan later. Lisa, you, your journey in, into the visual arts uh, as a practicing artist, painter, and a person who's interested uh, in the emigrant community in London and in America, uh, and whose work is based largely, to a certain extent, uh, on that emigrant experience. Again, I'd ask you the same question, Lisa, uh, and I must say you framed it very well in a recent interview, a beautiful interview that was uh, published in the uh, Sunday Independent, where you referred uh, uh, to your time in Clifton School, and which also um, focuses on a very, up, a very important upcoming solo exhibition that you have on in London 
So um, I'll hand it over to you, Lisa, and maybe you could tell us a little bit about your experiences. Yeah, thanks, Des. Um, I'm really sorry. My neighbour is having their bathroom replaced, so you can probably all hear a lot of banging, and it seems to have really amped up the noise since we came on. <laughs> oh, you're uh, fine. It's the world we live in now, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Um, thanks, Des. Uh, yeah, so... Um, yeah, for me, I guess I was I was quite lucky when I was in school, I um, knew quite early on that I always wanted to do something with art and, and loved it. Like any chance I got to make something or draw or paint and things like that, I loved. And we, I did pretty good in other subjects as well, but that was what I, what I knew I loved. But I actually, I loved the arts festival and it was just like it was a sort of sense of the arts being important and seeing all these people come from all over the world and seeing that, that that's what they could do with their lives but when I was growing up there wasn't so such a focus on on visual arts and I didn't know anyone that was an artist so I had no idea like how you would apply to university or that was even something you could do I knew you could become an art teacher but other than that I didn't really have any clue and what happened was um, in our final, so when I was in Leaving Cert, the very beginning, um, Miss O'Brien came, who I'm not sure if she's still the art teacher, but is she, she, is she, yeah. Um, she, she changed like everything <laughs> for me. And uh, she like basically worked with me that whole year and helped me like put my portfolio together. And at some point around the same time, I'm not sure if it was her or the arts festival, they brought in, I think his name is David Kane. He's an artist, I think from Australia. Australia. Yeah, yeah, and he he came in and he had gone to 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 GMIT to do art, and he talked us through that whole process. And it was from that, from seeing his talk, I was like, oh, I can do this actually. And luckily, my mom and dad they didn't know anything about it, but they were quite supportive and like, as long as you go to college to do something, we don't care. <laughs> um, so that was like a really key point. So whenever I've done talks and stuff, I try and, you know, when I have a longer chance, try and actually talk people through what that process is. Cause I mean, and also this like will make me seem old, but we didn't really have the internet or anything to just Google it. <laughs> so we felt really, um, yeah, it felt really unattainable, I guess, until somebody like Miss O'Brien or like the Arts Festival brought in somebody like David to kind of really tell you like, actually you could do this. Um, so that was it. Yeah, I didn't actually get in the first year I applied. So I got rejected. <laughs> There's a lot of rejection in the arts as well, <laughs> but um, but it but it is worth it. Um, so I did a portfolio course in GTI, which actually was the best thing ever because I think having that extra year was was really good for me. And then I went to GMIT and did uh, the four year degree. And then when I was there, I was just so lucky. Like they have some like I've been in universities like really fancy ones here in London and the the teachers I had in Galway were like some of the best ones I learned so much from them and it's sometimes in like those smaller places like and places a bit more off the beaten track like Clifton like Galway that actually you get some really interesting people making art and doing things it doesn't always have to be focused on a big city which I think people people forget and with the internet that makes it all so much more open um, so I did my undergrad and when I was there most of my lecturers there had they were all Irish, but they had been to London to do their masters. And again, I didn't really know anybody, you know, close to me that had done anything like that, but they sort of taught me through the steps and kind of made me feel like I could do it. Um, so then I finished my, my BA, um, spent some time in Galway, got a studio there in art space. And um, there was like a great community of artists in Galway at the time, there still is. Um, which was really special and I loved it um, and then I decided to come to London and do my master's um, and there I started making work as Des said like sort of becoming more interested I've always made paintings about the, sort of the past and images of the past but more like retro but I started looking at history and Irish history and that was sort of a, a journey and then after that I had about seven years between my my master's and starting my PhD and that whole time I was sort of you know making making art and um, having small exhibitions here and there and actually having the arts festival I've had a couple of exhibitions at the arts festival having that as a place I can go back to 
and they'll be just so generous and give me a, a space to have a show um because i find sometimes as long as you have just one thing to work towards that's all you need to keep it going um, and that's been amazing and at the arts festival like you'll meet people like like you're going back home to clifton where you know everyone but then and it's so nice to have everybody that you grew up with come and see your work but you will meet people like from the arts council from like all over the world like on my first day of my PhD, I met an English woman who had spent time in Randstone and um, one of the professors at CSM, I think, helped Brendan set up the Arts Festival and Talent Hire. She was really connected to the Arts Festival. So you'd be amazing how, how um, what a network it is um, coming from where we come and it's, it's real privilege. Um, and yeah, and that's it. So now I'm, I'm, I started my PhD because I had this project I was trying to do and it's becoming quite difficult to get it done. It's, it's a lot of research and it's quite academic as well as making paintings. And um, somebody sort of, somebody who's a women's historian said to me, I think you could do this as a PhD and it'd be a lot easier. And um, so it's, it's basically just a really long project and a very big project. Um, and that I, I write about it as well as, as making paintings. That's, that's what a PhD in the arts is. <laughs> um, Thanks Lisa. So. You know, you're, what you say there is so important and like Tristan, you know, your work and uh, Tristan's film Harvest, I was looking at it, uh, and your own work, Lisa, reflects back on some of the older generations that have passed out of Connemara uh, on the lifestyles that are changing. Uh, so for, for students um, in school who are thinking about it, inspiration is really uh, on your doorstep through your family and friends and your environment. Uh, and you are marvellous, both of you are marvellous examples of how you can uh, use um, your own history and uh, the history of your community as inspiration for your work and inspiration for such work um, of such quality. Um, now, Seamus, uh, you're welcome. You know, you're um, talking about heritage and taking our work from uh, an inspiration from our community. Uh, I suppose the Shannos tradition, um, the the traditional music flows in your own blood and in from your own area, uh, and you've your your career is 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 taking off like a rocket. Um, we can't switch on the television set at all, James, nowadays without seeing you on it. You know, at various events, and it's marvelous. It's great. It's great to see, and more than Christian and Lisa, uh, to see uh, one of our own on an international stage. Uh, and I'd say to the students that are listening as well, you know, there's no reason that one one of you uh, or a number of you um, at some stage in the future wouldn't be wouldn't be sitting on that international stage. So, Seamus, tell us about your journey uh, and how you how you've how you've fared out so far. Well, yeah, you fairly nailed nailed hit the nail on the head there with the introduction. My introduction was was purely based on luck and the family I was born into and the, the area I was born into. I suppose uh, with the Shannos tradition and the language that would have set a very good foundation for my musical pursuits and my musical endeavours. Uh, when, initially, when I started off, I suppose, learning and, and being introduced to the older styles of music, um, that's all I would have heard around, and it never would have been in my mind to pursue it as a career. It was more of something that was in the area and something that I wanted to preserve and something that I wanted to engage with through f familial connections and stuff like that. And so that went on for a few years, and I was just enjoying learning the craft and, and learning the stories and the heritage and stuff like that. And really, it was only when I was introduced to the Clifton Arts community through uh, Marie Walsh, who are, I'm going to be forever indebted to for introducing me to, to Clifton mm -hmm. and the brilliant community and the surrounding areas like Little Frack and Renville and the likes. Um, that's when I really started um, kind of getting a real sense of enjoyment and excitement out of um, the endeavours that were there with the music. So through the group Etiole, um, I got introduced to the Clifton Arts Festival and the Clifton Trad Fest. And, and the surrounding festivals led by the, the likes of Leo Hallisey, Bog Week and Sea Week and stuff like that. I started getting introduced to um, a lot more of a broader spectrum of art um, through kind of poetry and visual art, um, contemporary music and stuff like that. And it was really kind of eye opening for me that, God, there are people out there really honing their craft and making uh, a living out of this stuff. And that was exciting. And I suppose through Clifton Arts Festival, then I did get exposed to a lot of, um, like I said, there. Uh, 
contrasting genres to the Shanos and the traditional Irish music that I'd be used to. But I also got to see um, some of my musical heroes on stage. So the likes of Hermitage Green or Church the Ladies, um, them kind of people that I would have looked up to and performing on a live stage in my local area, um, only 45 minutes from the house. And um, that was really inspiring as well. So I started really um, getting interested and in kind of pursuing this. And, and um, it started becoming a realistic vision to actually pursue music and the arts as a, as a career path. And so the, the Clifton Arts Festival was really, really instrumental in um, nurturing my understanding and my development of my craft uh, in that sense. And um, I suppose through that, then I got into the, the Irish nights and stuff that were going around the place and got firsthand experience of actually performing on stages and getting used to crowds and engaging with people, collaborating with poets and dancers of contemporary styles, tap, uh, Ottawa Valley step dance, stuff like that, that I never would have been exposed to only for, I was so lucky to have the people and the support system around me through, I, I must say, a lot to do with the North Connemara community and Clifton and Letter Frack um, and Renville, as I said before. I, I won't go into names because if I, if I start listing names, there's too many people to mention that, that were instrumental in my development. Um, but through that then, uh, and over the years, I started getting exposed to the likes of Bill Whelan, a um, brilliant composer who has set up uh, set up shop, I suppose, in our locality over in Roundstone. And uh, through that, I got um, given unreal opportunities that I never would have dreamt of when I started off. Uh, like I said before, I never thought that, that, that the Shano tradition and the Irish music would have been such, uh, such a global kind of appeal, uh, that it would have such a global appeal. And uh, I've, I've got since then to work with some, some real big uh, heroes of mine, like the RT Concert Orchestra. And as you mentioned earlier on, Riverdance, just before the pandemic hit, I was performing in uh, Radio City in New York with Riverdance. And uh, it's just completely surreal to think that I went from singing Shano songs in school at four years old to being able to, to take my craft and perform on international stages like that. And I, I can only... Um, I can only stress, I can't stress enough um, that, that it has to do with the people that were around me. The likes of the Clifton Arts Festival, the Clifton Trad Fest, Rinville Irish Nights, Roundstone Irish Nights, Trad in the Western Marie Watch Group, you all, um, only for that, that support system that I had growing up. I, I never would have been able to actually envision um, pursuing a career in the arts and, and being able to develop and hone my craft in that sense. So um, I, I think sometimes it's only when I came into my adulthood that I really appreciated um, the, the, the level of support that we have in the in the Connemara area and the, and the, the the sense of rooting and um, the, the deep roots we have in our tradition and in our language that it's on our doorstep and there's so much there to use and expose through art um, that that is so appealing to people across the globe and uh, like I said it's a huge amount of luck and that we're born into such a great area and that we have the people there like Brendan Des Sean and all the the people that I mentioned before this. To, to help us, to nurture us as we grow up and help us hone our crafts to then deliver our art and our heritage to people across the, across the world. And, and that's been a really inspiring part of my journey um, in the arts. Well, um, Seamus, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, so, um, you know, listening to all three of you there speak um, and uh, how, how gracious uh, and appreciative you are uh, of, uh, um, as Seamus Heaney says in his poem, Miracle, uh, of the ones who have known him all along uh, and raised him up. Um, uh, and that's very deeply felt by people who are involved in the arts. But it also must be stressed, uh, I think, um, that the amount of work, self-discipline, dedication, uh, and as Lisa said, willingness to accept rejection sometimes along the way, uh, and yet having the strength to uh, pick yourselves up uh, uh, and carry on um, and, uh, and, and go back to creating your art uh, is also very important to note. And, you know, with uh, and, and addressing, addressing young students and young people coming up, um, uh, you know, to, to realize that it, it is it is a hard a hard road to travel the creative world, but it is so rewarding. And to see people like the three of you here today uh, as witnesses to that, um, Tristan, I'm just going to go back to you for a second there, and, uh, and maybe might just uh, open it up then to the class. 
uh, as as the senior citizen in this group, uh, <laughs> I'd, apart from myself, um, you know, uh, the the process of learning never stops, Tristan, as you go along. It's harder the older you get. So they tell me. I think I think it does. Yeah. Um, but you're still you're still full of energy and creativity and and uh, optimism. Yeah, yeah, no, I am, and I think, like I said, it was um, sometimes you you can struggle in one thing, like like I struggled a little bit in school. I know that, um, but sometimes it's just you find your thing, and and just because you struggle with something doesn't mean you, you know you might not have found that thing, that passion. And I think when you find that passion, you know, like 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 we we've been lucky enough to find i think you know it and and the passion mm -hmm. is what picks you up off yeah. the ground after every rejection and it's the the passion to do it you're not doing it for money you're not doing it for these things you're doing it because you love it and because it makes you happy and i think doing something that makes you happy you know changed my life you know yeah. and uh yeah well listen uh you know what, what you have said has been inspiring certainly to me and i'm sure to some of the students in the classroom there um would are there any questions from the from the class there uh, in Clifton Community School? Would you like to ask one of the one of the artists uh, a question? Yeah, Anybody Christian's. Hand? Gonna, sorry, does Christian's going to ask a question just there? Great. Okay. Yeah, you got to come up closer, Christian. Sorry, pull up the chair. You can, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, a, I had a question for Seamus. I was wondering, when you were younger, uh, how did you progress musically? Was it mainly through practice or were there any other things that you did? Yeah, so I suppose initially, um, as I started off playing music, it wasn't really a thing where I sat down to practice for an hour. Um, I, I was lucky to be, be in a house full of, full of musicians. So I had two older brothers who were there before me playing music. So it was something that kind of happened organically in the house. Where, where music would always be playing or there'd be songs being sung or there'd be dances being danced in some corner, a dark corner in the house. So that's how it started off. And then I suppose as I, as I progressed through lessons and stuff like that and started competing and started performing professionally, yeah, practice became a, a, a real kind of big deal. I'd sit down and I'd have my schedule set up for the week where I'd do a certain amount of practice and, and work on the technical aspects of, of music and stuff like that, but also through self-exploration as well, kind of exploring the more technical sides of maybe music, production or the the use of the the gear that you might use in gigs and stuff but um i found that the real rewarding um develop development uh, developmental stages were collaborating with other musicians so actually calling up um a few of your mates that might play in the locality and getting together and actually sharing some songs or sharing some tunes that was that was seriously developmental it was almost better than than the structured practice that i had throughout the weeks and um, to actually collaborate with other artists or collaborate with other dancers musicians singers and and learn something from them that you can then apply to your craft so um if if, if that's in summation i think collaborating with other people is 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 a seriously seriously um instrumental part of developing your craft uh, whether it's music dancing poetry the visual art or whatever uh, that that's something that was hugely important to me good thanks, thanks. Yeah. thanks very much christian Great. Uh, Molly, there's um, a question from Molly now. Oh, not Molly. Right, how are you? She, she's going to take a minute. Um, a question. Is there another question? One of yeah. Question for Lisa. Um, Hi. Yeah. So, um, have you ever had to uh, let down a, a great opportunity for another one? It, but sorry, hold on. I, I worded that wrong. Have you ever had to turn down an opportunity uh, because you knew that if you waited longer, you might have the chance to have an even better opportunity for like for the future? Um. Oh, that's a good question. No, no, I don't think so. I think I've always been thinking oh whatever comes along I better just dive straight into that I think um I, ha I haven't yeah 
and, and also like there's some so say for instance when I got into to the course at GMIT some people were saying oh I'm going to wait a year and see if I get into NCAD because that's got a better you know better reputation but actually I think you know if you're given a chance with something and it feels right you can make the most of anything um, and I think I'd probably always be worried that it wouldn't come along that you should probably grab whatever opportunities in front of you that's just me anyway <laughs> Thanks, Tisa. Okay, and Molly now. Go on, Molly. Great, yep. Molly. Um, do you find it difficult to make a living out of like, uh, like getting paid and stuff? Because it would be different to like an office job where you get like a wage and you'd be paid every month for. Very good, Molly. Yeah. Yeah. Tristan, do you want to take that one? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it can be. It can be tough. Yeah, you don't get your regular, you know, nine to five, Monday to Friday kind of wages. And like sometimes you can get paid and it, you can be paid handsomely, but then you mightn't work for three months. So that money has to be scheduled out, you know? So there can be times it's a famine or a feast in the arts. Sometimes you can you can have a roll of a few months where you, you know, you think you've made it and then you don't work for a year you know yeah. which which is why I started creating my own work to, so I didn't have to have to rely on other people to give me to give me work you know but it can be it can be hard but yeah I I'm, I'm far happier I'm far happier than I was when I had a nine to five because I'm doing what I love so it's you know the money kind of becomes a little bit secondary but you do still have to live as well you know yeah what about yourself, Seamus or Lisa? I was just going to say, I think that's a really good question. And I think there's often not enough honesty in the arts as to how people actually do make a living. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always had a part time job as well. So right now I work as a graphic designer as well. And those are skills I learned when I was in art college. So they taught us how to use Photoshop, how to edit videos. And that's how I make a living now. For years, I used to just work in a restaurant as well. Um, which I first started doing in Connemara. <laughs> um, but like Tristan said, for me, if I was to have given that up and just taken a full-time office job, I, I know I wouldn't be happy. So I'd rather do something else as well to know I have my bills paid and then spend half my time. And, and sometimes I make money off my art, but it's, it's not the main um, thing. And knowing I have another way to pay my bills is, is, um, is, a, is a great relief as well. Yeah. It's a good question, really good question. Yeah, great question, Molly. What, what about yourself, Seamus? Yeah, I'm just, Tristan and, and Lisa fairly covered it uh, very well there. Like it, it, it can be a bit of a romantic idea pursuing the arts. And, you know, I'm going to do what I love every day and I'm going to play as much music as I want and I'm going to collaborate and I'm going to travel around the world. And that all sounds great. But at the end of the day, you do come home and you do have bills to pay and you do have to feed yourself and survive. So like that, like Lisa was saying, it is always good to have a plan set out, have a part-time job, or as Tristan said, to have the, the get up and go to be creating your own work in order to ensure that you have a stable, um, stable work plan and stable income throughout the year, rather than getting your surge of, of cash one month and, and being quiet for three months and then getting another great opportunity. So it's only really in the last few years I'm starting to realize that. Um, I, I'm in with the, the mother and father at the moment, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy out, so I have, <laughs> I'm getting fed the dinner every night, but um, <laughs> as I go off and, and I do have rent to pay and stuff like that, that's when things start to get real and you have to be thinking about, okay, how am I going to sustain this over, over a long period of time? So yeah, I definitely would recommend really putting a lot of thought on how you're going to sustain um, your career in the arts and how you're going to realistically keep yourself going, um, as well as pursuing what you, you love doing as well. Thanks very much, Seamus. Um, yeah, what I say there, um, and, and you know, what, what Seamus was saying there about the, the romanticism of the arts and flying around the world and performing, you know, that there is also the practicality of, of uh, making a, live, a livelihood from, from what you love doing. Uh, and the three, uh, the three guests that we have here today really exemplify that creative spirit and yet that uh, uh, awareness of the practicalities of life and uh, uh, what faces us all and what will face all, uh, all of you, all, all of the students in the future. Um, have we any more questions, Nikki, or are we? That, yeah. 
Um, what I'd say uh, to uh, before we round off um, would be uh, to the students uh, in Clifton Community School uh, and to all the other schools in the, in the in the area and to people who will be listening um, uh, to this um, uh, broadcast um, is that you know reach out to the arts uh, you know make yourself aware of them um, and you will find in them something of interest something that uh, you can use as a hobby, something you can use to um, uh, for your own just pure pleasure and joy. Uh, and maybe like the three uh, guests that we have here today, Tristan, Lisa and Seamus, you may find that you want to, to, to uh, make your life in the arts. Uh, I'd also say that, um, you know, to get involved in it, you know, we Clifton Arts Festival has an office in town. If you're passing by someday in Clifton, uh, everybody's welcome uh, when uh, when restrictions uh, allow and when it's safe to do so. That uh, everybody's welcome to knock on the door to say, "Look, at, uh, I can play the tin whistle, I can paint, I can take photographs," uh, and you know, uh, we're always here to listen to um, projects or um, people who are interested in the arts, particularly young people. And I'd also encourage people, you know, young students in the schools in the area come to the concerts uh, that we do during the winter time, the, the Clifton Art Society concerts, classical, tradition, jazz, you know, come in, sit down and listen. If you don't like it, you can, you know, you, you don't have to, as I say, go mad about it, but sometimes you will enjoy it. Uh, come in and look at the art exhibitions um, and expose yourself to art. And that's how you will really uh, get to love it uh, and make it part of your lives. I'd like to, to finish up by thanking, first of all, the three recipients of the, the Clifton Arts Festival bursary, as I said, was an, an initiative that was uh, set up some years ago. Uh, it's, uh, it's important for us uh, in that uh, part of the, of the bursary, uh, when, we, when we approached uh, the recipients, uh, we asked just that they become ambassadors for the arts in Clifton, ambassadors for their community. And on behalf of Clifton Arts Festival, I can say uh, hand on heart that there uh, are no better uh, ambassadors for the arts in Connemara than Tristan Hania, Seamus O'Flaherty uh, and Lisa O'Donnell. Uh, and we are proud of you. We are proud of the success that you have attained. But most of all, we are proud of you as the people you are. It's great to see ones of our own uh, doing so well. And also uh, to finish up, I'd like to thank Clifton Community School and all the class uh, that joined us here today, and particularly the people who asked questions who were brave enough to come out front. Uh, and I'd like to thank Mary Kelly, Principal, uh, and Nicholas Snow uh, for, for helping us out uh, on this project uh, today. And students, uh, we will be doing more uh, of these, I hope. Uh, we'll be engaging with you more, I hope. And as we go along, we'll be engaging with you in person uh, and through the arts. Uh, and I'd like to thank Tristan, Nick, uh, Lisa, and Seamus especially. Thanks very much, folks. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay.